Hello and welcome to another episode of the Owlings Podcast. I'm your host for this evening, or this morning, Jeffrey C. Jacobs. But I'm not going to dominate this conversation because we're talking about heroes. And my hero, David, a great Toastmaster, is going to lead this discussion. David, take it away. All right. Uh, so our topic for tonight is heroes. So what we're really going to talk about is, is heroic archetypes. And uh, I'm going to list uh, some heroic archetypes, I'll talk a little bit about what they are, and then throw it open to, uh, to questions and comments. I'm going to start off with my favorite type, which is the everyman hero. Mm -hmm. um, the reason I like it is it's really about an ordinary person being a hero. Um, it means they're, they're typically underdogs because it could be the zombie apocalypse, and it's just an ordinary person surviving. They're not seals they're not ex-marines they're not super duper police officers uh with you know sniping skills or, or stuff like that they're just ordinary people trying to survive under different difficult circumstances so that's the kind of hero i like a lot in my stories is the everyman hero or could be a woman because i like stories about underdogs so i'm going to throw it open to you guys how do you feel about the everyman hero yeah absolutely that's growth you start with someone with flaws who may not be up to the task. And by the end, you're rooting for them because they have just become the hero. This is a great trope. It's a great way of making your characters uh, pop. And that is what I want to do with my novel, in fact, with uh, Kevin. I mean, one thing that I just uh, you know, recently had a review and working on the novel now, Kevin has always been a foil and he's always been sort of a, a guy that is not who you expect and uh, sort of a bumbler but by the end he's going to save the day and that's all about becoming the hero rather than being the hero all right shay uh, i'm neutral on this uh, i'm not jumping out of my skin with excitement about the everman hero but i can be convinced with a with a solid argument but i will say that uh, an advantage to that type of hero is uh, the ability for the reader, to, the reader to slip into the skin of that hero pretty easily, which yeah. is always appealing. But mm. I don't want to cut you off. Go ahead. Yeah, no, and people, I think, tend to root for the underdog. So yeah. Rocky, Rocky is a perfect example of this mm. type of hero, uh, especially the Rocky that we saw in the, in the very first movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. Somebody you would never expect to have a chance in the in, in the. No, I, I certainly prefer that type of archetype in like ro romance heroes. I don't like a romance hero being a secret billionaire, um, like like Christian Grey or a werewolf or a vampire. We don't need to bedazzle uh, mm -hmm. our romance interests. I like glorifying romance in the everyman. Uh, so I will say, for romance, I'll be excited and jump, jump out of my skin uh, mm -hmm. for that archetype. The billionaire. Uh, love interest is is actually a subgenre within romance. It's really, really? Mm -hmm. this whole thing. Oh yeah, it's, it's a oh, thing. Oh man, winning the winning the millionaire. Money is sexy, huh? I'd say this. Oh yeah, distance because it's it's not uh, really my particular genre, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a thing. I mean, there it's a cliche, but of course, just as being sexy and beautiful and all that is the uh, keys to success for a woman. Having well, money my favorite is the keys to a man. <laughs> my favorite romance movie is Her, which is a man in a computer. So, you know, it's right. hard, to, <laughs> hard to get any, any more uh, every, every man. That, that, that is that. true. It's a really good movie. There's actually a pretty cool movie but with um, Ellen DeGeneres where she builds this robot to go on a space, a space mission. And then she realizes that, no, actually the best person to go on the space mission, the People love her robot, and her robot can go lead a life that she could never have, and she could just go up into space by herself. And that's what she does. I can't remember the name of the movie, though. Hmm. But the yeah. Everman hero has some uh, tired tropes, David. Uh, hmm. You know, like the, uh, the, the chosen one prophecy that you always uh, talk about, you know, how, it, how it's somehow in some, some crazy circumstance, it's the, the clerk at the grocery store that it happens to be you know, the chosen one. Why is it always uh, pulled from an everyman? Why isn't it naturally, you know, a king's son or a god, demigod? Yeah, although oh. I think oftentimes that the, the chosen one uh, sometimes could be the, uh, the everyman, um, but it, the chosen one, I, I think, I feel like I see more often uh, in some of the other um, archetypes. 
All right, then go for it. Yeah. Keep going. Well, yeah, no, well, I'm, I'm just to, to, to say that you are, I'm, I ain't no senator's son. I mean, that's the thing. I, it's harder for me to empathize with a senator's son or a prince than it is for me to empathize with a guy who's a bit down and out. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, David, uh, and, not David. Um, and I agree. I think Shay hit the, hit the nail on the head there. Hmm. It's easier hmm. to identify with an everyman than, than perhaps it is to identify with, you know, James Bond or somebody. Right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. All right. Our next archetype is the classical hero. Hmm. Uh, someone who possesses a great talent can sometimes appear normal until their powers manifest. Um, a, uh, I tend to think that most urban fantasies um, fall into this category, uh, where you turn out turn out to have a kick-ass heroine who has one overarching talent or skill. Mm -hmm. Being at the, uh, you know, she's a coyote coyote shifter, or uh, you know, a top-notch mage. She just does just has to figure out how to harness her powers, or. Um, she has some kind of magical talent that's extremely rare and makes her special. Right. Wonder Woman is actually a yeah. pretty good example of this archetype. Hmm. This is the classical hero. Mm -hmm. Throwing it out there. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll say Steven Universe is a perfect example of that. I mean, Steven is half gem in the gem universe and half uh, human. And that makes him a hybrid that is very powerful, but he's not powerful in the beginning. He grows his power and learns his powers and learns how much he can do with his powers. And that's, you know, he starts from a, a powerful place, but he grows into his powers to win the day. And again, that's, that's a fairly normal arc for a classical hero um, where they, they become almost larger than life. I think these are very good beginner's heroes for writers because when a hero has a, a particular skill whether it's a power or just like a supersonic intelligence, um, memory, whatever, um, then it's much easier to make sure that hero doesn't become passive, to keep them active in the story. Uh, you know, one beginning novice mistake I often see is the protagonist just being a receptor of action, uh, being very passive. And I, I think that's hard to do when you have a, a, a classic hero that has a, a, inter, a, a very important uh, skill to the story. Right. Well, I, and I, I would agree with that comment for all of these archetypes, that uh, um, they're kind of like patterns for heroes. You still have to do the, the things um, that a writer does to make those characters live and breathe, uh, to give them quirks, uh, to give them meaningful motivations in the context of, of your world and, and your story. Um, but sometimes you can look at the shape of your story and, and figure out, well, what kind of, what, what type of hero would help make this story that I'm envisioning sing? Is it an everyman? Um, I mean, I'm tired of seeing zombie stories where it's always the, uh, the elite uh, ex-seal with a super duper cache of, of uh, heavy weapons um, who survives the apocalypse. I'm not interested in that guy. I'm more interested in seeing a soccer mom and how she survives. <laughs> right. Serious. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How does her? How do her organizational skills come to play um, right. when the zombie apocalypse happens? Right, right. Yeah. I just slipped back into the everyman hero, so I apologize for that. <laughs> All right, it, it's a good one. But it, it's yeah. a contrast with the, the classical hero, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, uh, the epic hero. Um, mm. This is this is almost like a superhero. I I, I tend to think that uh, despite some some vestiges of uh, being regular people and having everyday lives that most of the Marvel superheroes are actually um, epic heroes. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they tend to be uh, otherworldly characters, uh, superhuman deeds, uh, top-notch skills or, or powers. Um, they're just larger than life. Mm. Well, in that case, of course, I've got to bring up the Doctor from Doctor Who. I mean, he is by far an epic uh, hero because, of course, he saves the universe all the time and he is skilled in everything. Um, yeah, I think that the epic hero is fun. Um, I, I think that it's even funner when they have epic flaws to go along with their epic power. Mm -hmm. uh, I think mm -hmm. that the more well-rounded you make the epic hero, um, the better. I mean, that, that's the case for any character I know. Make all your characters well-rounded. 
Uh, but I think that there's some caution that you really have to do that with an epic hero. So you don't end up just with a very OP god figure. Uh, a good oh, yeah. example of this done well, in my opinion, was the movie Thor. Um, mm. With that character being, you know, a, a Norse god. But mm -hmm. also lots of humor, lots oh, yeah. of, um, you know, social flaws, mm -hmm. uh, moralistic flaws. A All lot right. of cool stuff going on. Oh, oh yeah. He throws down the mug and says, win. Fetch me another. Another. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then he gets a beer belly in the later movies. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, epic heroes seem like they're so powerful, so larger than life, that it's hard to ground them, I, I think. Mm. It's hard to um, give them the necessary traits for, for the reader to necessarily identify with them, unless they're on some kind of power trip. Uh, mm. I think Marvel has actually done fairly well with with their heroes and in, in trying to ground them and, and make them um, relatable. But I, I think that's a challenge with the epic hero. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, another good one is the tragic hero, sometimes known as the failed hero. Um, mm -hmm. That's somebody potentially who has the powers and all the characteristics to be a true hero, but they have a flaw. And the flaw is what takes them down. The flaw is what prevents them from being the person that you can see that they're capable of being. Um, Anakin Skywalker represents a pretty good uh, example of this. Uh, another one, uh, and this gets interesting because oftentimes this is a negative character arc where the character loses. Um, I think more interesting was the movie Shane about a gunfighter who wants to leave his past behind and never pick up a gun again and never kill again. But he has to become the hero who saves basically the town by raising his gun up and killing again. So it's a negative arc in, in that he fails in his goal of becoming a pacifist and giving up the way of the gun, but he succeeds in being the hero that the town needs in order to save it. Um, so I think the tragic slash failed heroes is something you can do some really interesting things with. Is this but, the same as anti-hero? This is not the same as anti-hero. Hmm. Oh, I, yeah, describe to me. What's the difference? Um, so the anti-hero anti is coming up next. Oh, okay. The anti-hero anti would be somebody like Han Solo. Um, okay. Somebody who is perhaps less than heroic in their behavior or, or their various characteristics. And right. Questionable motives and, and goals. But the right. tragic hero has just flat out failed. The, the tragic hero is somebody who has everything it takes to be a hero. Maybe they, they've even tried to be a hero, but they're constantly um, hamstrung by their own flaw. And, 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 and is their arc, um, you said their arc is, is often a negative one, like a downfall into villain, villainry? The, the arc is often a, a negative one uh, in, in, for instance, it could be the rise and fall of a particular king or a particular hero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so can these heroes be protagonists if they fall into villainy? Like, is that, um, well, sure. I, you know, I, I wouldn't argue that Anakin Skywalker is a protagonist of many of the movies, if not all of them. Yeah, uh, Im imagine um, uh, somebody, uh, well, I, I can't think of a, of a great example. Um, yeah. Shane, to me, was the most interesting one because it was a, negative arc with a positive uh, outcome okay right in, in that he totally failed in his goal of becoming a good person or giving up yeah. the way he's done in, in the old west but, but he, he, he he saved everybody yeah in a sense he was a hero well so have you seen book series or books where the protagonist starts out as a hero and then decays into being a villain like the tragic hero um, I'm trying to think. I feel like I've come across this. But it's rare, I would say that's the conclusion. It's, it's definitely rare. Right. Like I said, for something like Shane, which was, which was yeah. a single novel, um, I thought that, for instance, was a very powerful arc. And for anybody yeah. who's seen the, the movie, the old Western. Um, okay, well then, after examining all the evidence, <laughs> that's my favorite hero, hero <laughs> archetype. With you. So this power here, it's just, it can be a little bit hard to harness. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I love cool. the, 
Yeah, I, I love having everything that you possibly need to become a hero and still failing to become yeah. a hero. I think that's I think that's an awesome arc, an awesome complex uh, dialogue on human nature, on yeah. so many relatable qualities. Yeah. Yeah. It is, is the archetype of addiction, the archetype of the hero that is failing because of cocaine, or because of alcohol, or because of even marijuana for some reason. Very yeah, powerful. Too stoned to remember to go and save the day. And and you said it's rare, which means it's not overdone too much. So okay, I found my yeah. new favorite hero archetype. Yeah. Thank you. Shakespeare has done some. Um, mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't see this as often in current day. In fact, the only one I can really think of is the movie uh, HUD with Paul Newman, hmm. uh, which is, we're going back to the to the sixties for that. I haven't mm -hmm. seen it. <laughs> you boomer. It, it's a classic, but it's a little too long to describe in the in the sound bite. All right, fair. Anybody nice. look up HUD on the IMDb, the Internet Movie Database. Well, T L D R. David got me excited about an archetype of heroism. Nice. So, All right, hold on, sir. And he is not a boomer; he's an X. The next one, like I said, is the anti-hero. So that's the um, that's the person who you would not expect to be a hero. Questionable motives. Um, runs away from doing things that are heroic, um, not a good, not necessarily a good guy. Um, imagine a drug dealer who, um, you know, when a plane crashes into the river, he dives into the river to save people. And you're like, where did this come from? How did mm -hmm. do this? Um, I hate, I hate calling that. Okay. So, so this is my second favorite. It, it, it was probably my first favorite until you told me about the tragic hero, but this is my second favorite now. But I hate that it's called an antihero um, because I just feel like this is like the realest type of hero that you can have. Um, there is light and dark in everyone, and I really love how this stresses that. And so I think that it, it's a, it's one of the best, if not the best, uh, heroes you can write. And I would always recommend the anti-hero over a regular hero. And it, it's very popular. It, it becomes mm -hmm. interesting balance, especially if you're writing a series of books about an anti-hero. Uh -huh. Well, you know, I would say that the best villains are the ones that are true anti-heroes. The or ones anti that you could, you could, well, there is, I mean, there is an anti-villain, which is like, you know, someone that blows up children's hospitals, but saves puppies. <laughs> now, now, this is a topic for another podcast. <laughs> right, right. But I mean, the antihero that is the villain of the story can be one that the reader could read into and say, but I understand why he's doing that. It makes perfect sense. And I could kind of see why he does it. Those are the, those yeah. are the antiheroes that you really want to read more of. And you know, it's a great combination. I've done this combination in my ninth novel, mm. uh, sci-fi is antihero and unrivaled narrator. That's a great combination. Yes, yes. And then you can awesome. oftentimes in first person. Um, yeah. Sometimes your detective novels are an anti-hero, where they yeah. the grizzled, uh, you know, a pessimistic detective solves the crime even though he knows, you know, nothing good will come of it, but he's still going to figure it out. Right. He accomplishes it begrudgingly. Uh, another good example, um, one of the classic ones I think, is uh, Dirty Harry, um, Clint Eastwood in the movie Dirty mm -hmm. Harry. Mm -hmm. He's a He's a mean guy in, in the film. Uh, people don't like him. He's not friendly. Uh, he doesn't follow the rules. But a girl has been kidnapped. And the kidnapper will not give up her, her location. And if she's not found, she's going to die because she's been, I, I can't remember, I think she's been buried somewhere. Um, and uh, Dirty Harry breaks all the rules. But you're rooting for him every step of the way because he's the only one who's going to find the girl. So it's interesting. You have a, a very unlikable cop character who you're rooting for because he's going to save the girl, even though right. he's such a jerk in the film. Mm -hmm. Let me describe a hero, and then you tell me whether this is an anti-hero or whether it's a totally new category called psychotic hero. <laughs> okay? A hero that thinks he is a classic hero or maybe even an epic hero of totally moral standing but the reader can tell that he has serious flaws. Is that uh, an anti-hero or is that a delusional hero or is that, what is that? You hear the last part, the, the, the reader can see that he has what? That he has serious, if not fatal, 
flaws, moralistically, behaviorally, mentally? I think he could be a tragic hero or a, um, uh, or also a, uh, an, an anti-hero. It kind okay. of, uh, there was a series of novels um, oh, where, the, where the hero was a coward, right? And uh, as I recall, they were written in first person. Uh, he did heroic things because um, if it was the only way to survive, he would do something heroic. But, you know, it, it, in a, it, it was historical in context. So he only did heroic things for which he became famous uh, because he was a coward. And oftentimes he was uh, in the situations he was in because he was trying to do something illegal. <laughs> um, you know, so he, he becomes perceived as a hero when actually he's, he's a complete and, and utterly immoral coward. And the, the dichotomy was interesting about the books. Uh, I would look at him as both a failed hero and, a, and an anti-hero. Uh, I can't remember whether the author, the author or the character's name was George MacDonald Fraser. Mm. A long time since I read them. Uh, mm. I think I read them before you were born, Shay. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, this one, I'm not quite sure is a, is a subset, but uh, I'll, I'll include it anyway. The Byronic Hero. Mm. This is somebody who's prickly, sullen, uh, and inscrutable on the outside. Um, but the face that they show the outside world is not like the inside, where they have a much richer interior life going on. Um, and they're much more complicated than they seem to be at first. Uh, the classic example is probably Lord Darcy from Pride and Prejudice. Well, you think he's a jerk at first, but really, he's an honorable guy and a, and a great love interest, um, ultimately, in the, in, the, in the show. I'm not quite sure whether this is its own archetype or if it's, a, it's kind of a variation on some of the other ones. Yeah, I think it's kind of a variation. I see it as like a technique of uh, right. revealing one of the other ones. Right. And in some, some sense, it's a flawed hero. It's a, a hero that you don't know what they're thinking. I mean, you know, some of these, the thing about Doctor Who is, is many of the uh, types that we've described do describe him depending on the regeneration. And uh, of course, uh, for instance, the Doctor is many times inscrutable and you don't know what he's up to. Or many times he is, uh, you know, flawed like Capaldi's Doctor where he's like, was that right? Was I emotionally on char point? Was, was that uh, perfect or not? And he'd ask his companion, did he did hit the right beats. Um, but definitely inscrutable is one, inscrutability is one of his, his primary traits. All right, so the Byronic hero, do we like him or not? Or do we, we think he's just a subtype? Right. We, we put him under subtype. Okay. My, my subtype, fair, fair. subtype, but it's, I'm gonna go with Shay on this one. Cool okay. subtype, but a subtype. Okay, uh, the last one is also, I think kind of interesting. I'm not sure that I see this as often. The messianic hero, the messiah. Oh. It doesn't necessarily mean in the religious sense. This could be the, the psychotic one I was talking about. Um, but this could be, for example, um, the character knows the truth. And, and what they're trying to do is they're trying to spread the truth. Mm. They're trying to make sure that other people know the, the truth. And, and that's their goal in life. Now, mm -hmm. the issue with that is they tend to have kind of a flat arc. Um, so I feel like this lends itself sometimes to the um, uh, more uh, cause-related um, type fiction. Um, he found the truth of global warming, and the story is about how he he spreads the word to everybody and, and tries to you know change the world's climate or something like that. Mm. Um, or it almost seems like the truth itself is the hero, or the truth itself has the arc. Yeah, not necessarily yeah. the vessel. Yeah, I mean that 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 is a. Uh, that's usually a tragedy. I mean, Cassandra is the perfect example from uh, Greek tragedy. I mean, I know it's going to be, I know Troy's going to be invaded. I know Troy's going to be invaded, but no one listens because they think she's nuts and then it's invaded. Yeah, I, I can't say that I've ever written or tried to, to write this one. Uh, most of my stories tend to be uh, crime stories, uh, even if set in a fantasy or science fiction realm. So uh, in my stories, the truth is usually not known. 
and that's part of the, the story is is discovering it. Um, so I'm kind of scratching my head at, at this one, going, well, I haven't seen. Uh, like well, none, none I of mean, one of the perils with this is that your reader is always going to be suspicious of that truth. I think. Hmm. And I look at that as kind of a challenge. Yeah. Right. And, and a bunch of these different types of heroes, and, and I should add, they could be heroines as well. There's nothing mm -hmm. right. This was not gendered. This is a whole discussion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, is again making them relatable and uh, yeah, giving people the the opportunity to identify with them, uh, with them, and go on their journey and, and be willing to suspend disbelief in everything. Mm -hmm. So to recap, we have the everyman. My personal mm -hmm. work, the classical hero, like Wonder Woman, the epic hero, uh, larger than life, uh, you know, your, your, your standard superhero, uh, tragic hero or failed hero, uh, Shane or uh, Anakin Skywalker being the, the example, the anti hero, uh, which I think is pretty popular, but also a little bit tricky to write, and then the last two, I think, um, are interesting, probably less seen, but the Byronic hero and the Messianic hero. Mm. And, we, and we put superhero in epic hero, right? Same thing? Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, super, I think superheroes are epic heroes, but epic heroes don't necessarily have to be superheroes. Right. Right. Subset. Okay. Yeah. I'm with you. Mm. Well, that's great. And so I, I want to thank you both for another finely structured episode of the Outland Podcast. I hope you watch us next week where we will have another great writing discussion. Go be a hero. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye.